So if the cost of college education is increasing at twice the rate of healthcare, then where does all this extra money go? We should note that it isn't going to the classroom. The average four-year state university spends around 16% of their annual revenue on faculty salary. So what are those colleges spending all of their money on? First, colleges have seen a massive expansion in administration. A recent article about Washington State University, just across the state line from where I sit, sounds the alarm that over 31 years, the university has seen a 60% growth in the student body, which was supported by a 40% growth in faculty and an 860% growth in the administration. As obscene as this statistic sounds, this kind of administrative bloat is actually fairly representative of most American colleges and universities. Another study shows that the California State University system grew their faculty from 1975 to 2008 by about 4%. That's 11,600 faculty in 1975 to 12,000 in 2008. In the same period, the administration more than tripled. 3,800 administrators in 1975 to 12,000 in 2008. In fact, the 2008 numbers provide for more than one full-time administrator for every full-time faculty member. One clear contributor to this administrative bloat is the fact that with increased federal funding comes increased requirements for reporting and regulatory compliance. In 1952, when Congress overhauled the GI Bill, this time inspired by the flood of soldiers returning from Korea, a key adjustment made to the bill was a provision specifying that the school attended by the veteran must meet certain specifications in order for the veteran to be able to use his benefits there. The provision seems common sense enough. If the government is picking up the tab for this education, then it is within the government's rights to ensure that it is of a certain quality. And yet, this proved to be the camel's nose under the tent. Now, in order to receive Pell Grants and federally subsidized student loans, colleges must shoulder an extremely onerous reporting burden and staff a massive administrative bureaucracy in order to demonstrate compliance to the federal government's requirements and keep their Title IV money flowing. But on top of the added expense for this administration bloat, the need to constantly demonstrate compliance has changed the character of our college education. The reason is that the federal government is very ill-suited to the task of assessing something like the quality of a college education. For instance, consider this question. How do you assess the quality of a college's education? That's an extremely difficult question to answer. Every college is different, every course is different, every student is different. So how do we come up with a federal standard by which we can assess all of these different colleges? But what if we redefine our task a little bit? What if instead of trying to assess whether or not these colleges are providing a quality education, we assess whether or not they are properly defining their learning outcomes? We could define what a learning outcome looks like and then tell all the colleges that they need to formulate their learning outcomes in a nice rubric. Then, instead of trying to assess the quality of their education, we will assess whether or not they have completed this administrative task. That is a much more reasonable task but you have to notice that you're not assessing the quality of the education, you're assessing a rubric of learning outcomes. The obligation of reporting to the federal government has moved the goalposts on us. We are no longer striving to provide educated graduates. We're striving to produce the metrics that keep Title IV money flowing. And most of these metrics measure things that are peripheral to the actual moment of learning. Thus, federal money demands a certain kind of reporting in order to hold institutions accountable for the money that they have received. And slowly but surely, the reporting starts to dominate and transform the institution. First, by requiring a bloated administration in order to accomplish its tasks. And second, by demanding that the college focus on those things that are easiest to document rather than on those things that provide the best education. If you would like to follow this conversation, go to our blog where we will continue to post on our unique perspective on federal funding and higher education. The link is in the description or just go to nsa.edu and click on the blog. Thank you.